Look at this spectrum. Gorgeous. Notice anything odd? All the colours you could possibly imagine. Except, where's magenta? It's not there. Why then do we see it? Our brains are squishy, mushy information processors. They convert the billions of events going on around us into signals we can make sense of. The brain allows us to interpret these signals as sounds, smells and so on. One of the things going on outside your head is the electromagnetic field. There are waves of energy that ripple across this field. The frequency of these waves determines a range of effects. Some can reheat your soup and others show your bones. The best ones broadcast the breakfast show. We humans can only detect a tiny smidgen of these wavelengths with our bodies, most through our eyes, and some through our sunburns. The wavelengths we see through our eyes we call visible light. Why we detect just this narrow band of waves is up for debate, but we do know that EM waves between 400 to 700 nanometers, or the visible light spectrum, are the only wavelengths that travel easily through water. It also happens to be the part of the EM spectrum that the sun emits the most of. Given our early ancestors lived in the sea and were illuminated by the sun, it makes sense that we would evolve to detect the most common and useful wavelengths in the EM spectrum. Our eyes detect colour via specialised cone cells. There are three types of cone cell in the human eye. Ones to detect short wavelengths, the blues, one to detect medium wavelengths, the greens, and one to detect long wavelengths, the reds. But we see more than just red, green and blue. The cone cells in your eyes overlap in the wavelengths they detect. Look at this chart. You can see that when a ray of light with a wavelength of 570 nanometers enters your eye, it stimulates both the long and medium cones. Their responses are combined and sent along the optic nerve as one signal. And it's this signal that we interpret as yellow light. An odd quirk of this system is that when two beams of light at the exact same ratio enter the eye, the signal that is sent off to the brain is the same. These two combined light rays also cause us to see yellow. The screen that you are watching this on takes advantage of the way our brain perceives colour. If you look closely, you can see that screens are composed of small clusters of just red, green and blue lights, yet your display can produce the whole spectrum. Every colour that we perceive can be generated via this dual route, a single wavelength of light or a combination of wavelengths that stimulate our cones in the same manner. Except one. Magenta. There is no wavelength of light for magenta. Instead, we perceive it only when the S cones and L cones pick up a signal from pure red and blue light. Our brains literally make up magenta. Why? We don't know. It's probably quite useful though. Given that much of our early primate ancestors were in green forests, magenta fruits and flowers would have had the highest contrast against a green background, making it easy for our ancestors to find a tasty snack. Our brain does all kinds of these bizarre cognitive leaps all the time. You might be surprised just how much of the world around you isn't exactly as it appears.